Good morning and welcome to the Analyst Speaks. Today we'll be discussing the cost of petroleum price increase for Nigerians and the critical issues around it. On Friday, March 12, 2021, the Petroleum Price Regulatory Authority, PPPRA, published a new price template on its website. This received a lot of backlash from Nigerians across the country. Well, interestingly, the PPPRA deleted the price template from its website and the NNPC also denied any allegations of increase in PMS. Well, with me today in the studio, I have Mr. Teslim Shitabe, Managing Editor at ProShare Nigeria. Today, he'll be shedding more light on the subject. Welcome to the show, Mr. Teslin. Thank you very much, Josephine. Thank you. Um, so if you'd like to join us on the conversation, please use the hashtag, hashtag AxProShare and hashtag the Analyst Speaks and send in your comments and questions. We'll be taking them as they come. So Mr. Teslin, since the incident on Friday, a lot of Nigerians have had a lot of questions on their mind as to what is going on with the oil and gas industry. One of the most frequent questions among the Nigeria, Nigerians um, since the Friday, um, the day of the incident, is how are the prices of petroleum products regulated in Nigeria? Okay, um, thank you very much, Josephine. Um, I think I should start off by apologizing. My voice is a bit raspy. Um, I've had to talk for quite an extensive period over the weekend, and that's given me a bit of a cracked voice. Um, but to get to your question, um, regulation, is it required in an industry as sophisticated and perhaps in some sense as simple as the oil and gas industry? The answer is definitely yes. Now, should we regulate prices? The answer, as far as I'm concerned, is no. Mm. Now, why am I saying that? Basically because you want to understand that the best way to, under, to get proper pricing is for willing buyers and willing sellers to negotiate in an open market space, right? Okay. Now, if that happens, you want to assume that prices will be reflective of costs and specific margins. It should be high enough for those who produce the product to make a profit. But it should be sufficiently low so that those who want to buy the product can afford the product. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. So if we start from that premise, yes, look at the um, pricing of um, imported uh, refined oil into Nigeria. One of the major problems is what determines this price? Hmm. Who determines this price? Okay. How does this price get determined? Is it by what Adam Smith called the invisible hand? Hmm. Certainly not. It isn't the <laughs> invisible hand. It actually is the hand of a man or a group of men. Now, what we've seen on Friday has been a bit of an embarrassment of because um, we've got two agencies uh, who represent the same interests mm -hmm. having conflicts over whether there is an increase in oil price or whether there's not an increase in oil price. Now, let's take it, let's take it bit by bit. Who st uh, stipulates what the retail price of oil should be mm -hmm. in the market? That was, some years back, the function of the PPPRA. Mm -hmm. And it still is, according to the statutes, it still is the function of the PPPRA. However, there's a lot of interesting dynamics in what has happened. Okay. In the past, when you look at the Nigerian oil, oil sector, you find out that we had a large number of people going into the market, bringing in crude, mm -hmm. uh, no, refined oil into Nigeria. And prices were competitive. So if you have a situation where you have like five importers, mm -hmm. now these five importers go to different refineries around the world. And we have a situation where there's only one importer. Just one. Just one importer. Okay. And so that, mo that may, not to crack it into economic terms, but it's called monopsony, where you have just one supplier of the good. Now what does that do to the market? It distorts market prices because you don't have market situation where you have a lot of suppliers and you have a lot of people who want to buy the goods and they start trading the situation where different petrol stations 
offer different prices. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if I go to an NPC, I can buy at one price. Okay. If I decide to go to a Wato, for instance, be, uh, that is Adova now, mm -hmm. I would have looked at a different price, right? And, um, and you would have started seeing things like that occurring, you know, in the, in the economy. And then you would have said the market is properly deregulated, right? Because you have a lot of suppliers and you have a lot of people who want to buy. So market prices, for instance, if I go to the petrol station and I see 163, mm -hmm. and I go to another one, I see 167, yeah. which one do you think I'll go to? You go for the cheaper one. The cheaper one, yeah, of so course. great. So that's, that's how price gets determined, right? Of so course. different people now say, oh, this guy is selling faster than I am because mm -hmm. his oil is cheaper. cheaper yeah. So I renegotiate with my own suppliers abroad. Okay. I say, look, this won't work. I need a lower price because to beat I'm competition. competing. Yes, of course. And, that's, and that's how the market is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not working that way. Mm. So everybody depends on the NNPC. Yes. And the NNPC brings in its product yes. and sells to other marketers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that, um, from Rotterdam to Nigeria, you're looking at about 189 naira. Of course. Right? 189 naira. Now, look at where the thing is. I mean, petrol stations have been told to sell retail mm -hmm. at 163, 164, 165. But hey, even just bringing it in from um, Western Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I wow myself, <laughs> right? So, yeah, so you've seen 189. But that isn't the end of the story. There are other items mm -hmm. on the pricing formula. Okay. You're looking at things like lightering. Mm -hmm. Now, what is lightering? Lightering is not the light that are shining on us. Of course. Right? So, right, now, lightering means that you've got a situation where ships come in, mm -hmm. but they're very large ships. Okay. Right. And you don't want oil spillage. So what you tend to do is to break it into smaller ships who can come into our ports mm -hmm. and offload. So you see Mosini, you see Atlas Cove, mm -hmm. you get the, they offload to those kind of places. And then from there, move them into land, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. So that's what lightering is about. So there's a cost associated with that. With that. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lightering cost. Right, good. Then you also have costs of Steve Doring. There are people who are in the ports. They're doing one thing or the other. Mm -hmm. There's a charge for that. Right. Then we have the PPRA itself. It says, look, for me to provide you with a service of pro uh, providing a template by which you price your product, I'm going to charge you a fee. Mm -hmm. It's called an administrative cost. The administrative cost is actually one naira twenty three kobo, right? And then in addition to that, we look at it that look, we love our country, mm -hmm. and because we love our country so much, everybody around the country should have access to um, refined oil, mm -hmm. PMS mm -hmm. in particular, that's petrol, petrol yeah. at the same price. At the same price, yeah. So regardless of where you are, mm -hmm. the price is going to be the same. Of course. But that comes at a cost, unfortunately. And that cost is an additional seven naira fifty one kobo. And now let me come around an issue that I'm I'm particularly worried about mm -hmm. quickly here. And that is that seven naira fifty one kobo, why can't we remove it from the whole price formula? Hmm. Because the truth of the matter really is if you go across the country, nobody buys uh, PMS at the same price. When you move from Lagos to the eastern part of the country, it becomes more expensive. expensive. When you move from Lagos to the northern part of the country, it becomes more expensive, right? Of course. That is the law of the market. That's logical. So why do we have this extra 7 naira 51 cobalt plugged into our pricing formula? For me, that is worrisome, mm -hmm. right? It's quite worrisome. Then, of course, the person who brings this thing in, say wholesaler, right? He mm -hmm. must make some money. Mm -hmm. He's not a charity organization. So the wholesaler charges four naira three kobo, right? Puts that into the formula, and then when you now add all these things together, it's add everything, the price this, yeah, pick up this uh, product from the yeah. depot, mm -hmm. then you're looking at uh, two hundred and six naira. Wow. wow, right? You're looking at two hundred and six naira. Now, all, all this um, creates major problems, yeah. right, in the system. Um, what I think the PPRA did was to give an indicative. Price for Nigerians to understand that this is what you would have paid mm -hmm. if there was no subsidy. So before you start asking me whether there's subsidy or no subsidy, <laughs> right? I'm so I'm, I'm jumping the gun a bit. Okay. So I'm saying, so PPRA was saying that look, you know what? These are indicative. Like given where we are today and the cost of bringing these goods in, this is what you should pay. Mm -hmm. 
Now, whether you pay that or not is a different issue. NNPC has said that, no, you're not going to pay that, at least for the month of March. Okay. You will not, that doesn't mean that uh, down the line. Eventually. You will be, right, sure. <laughs> so, but it says, okay, you know what, you're not paying that. Okay. You're going to pay something less, right? Which most Nigerians might see as good, mm -hmm. depending on what side of the divide you belong to. Of course. Uh, yeah. Um, should we subsidize consumption? I believe not. What you should subsidize is production. If you need to do any subsidy at all, we should subsidize what we produce, right? To make it more competitive in international markets and all that. But com subsidizing consumption, the problem with that is that in environments like Nigeria, it favors a particular class. Yeah. People say that, yeah, they, you know, um, it will reduce transportation costs, um, distribution costs will also, logistic costs will also reduce mm -hmm. um, because you're going to move goods to the, to the urban centers from the rural centers, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That is true. Yeah. But it's also a massive distortion of prices. Now, supposing I allow things to be what PPRA, for instance, says mm -hmm. it is, it should be, right? Yeah. What happens? Uh, government saves a huge amount. Okay. And that would be more efficient for me, right? I'm not saying we won't suffer the pain. We will suffer Definitely. the pain, but that pain will be short term. Sometimes you need to get a blow to your jaw to wake you up, you and then you, that, yeah, then when yeah. you get that blow, you understand that look, it's really not easy, and so yeah. we need to make some adjustments. So, those adjustments are the things that I think personally we need to make. Um, the PPRA may not have communicated his intent properly, of course, yeah, certainly, it like didn't and because on Friday it was chaos, right? Yes, it was. I mean, the whole petrol All stations. They, yeah. about, oh boy, God. He, 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 we haven't seen those kind of situations Things for before, a long time. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was chaos on Friday. Um, NPC came out quickly to douse the tension, yes, they had which, to. which there was, was good. A lot of rising but tension. you know what? My argument is this for goodness sake, PPRA is a subsidiary of NPC. Wow. So how come there wasn't a conversation between them, between them before the announcement was made? Very interesting made? question. Right? So I would have expected that there would have been a, some kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. And the, and the uh, PPR tells uh, NAPC that, look, see, from our formula, this is what oil prices mm -hmm. should be retail. You know, this is what the retail pump price should be. And the NAPC will say, you know what, you can't go to town with that. Mm -hmm. We have promised that there will be no upward adjustment in March. Mm -hmm. So please keep it where it is. And that conversation would have been there, and it would have been, it would have not been, yeah, it would have been quite easy to handle. Yeah. But once PPRA went out to announce that without a conversation with the NNPC, then, I mean, it showed that government shouldn't be in the business of business. I mean, that, that's just reinforced my opinion yeah. that government shouldn't be in the business of business. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can imagine if it was a private sector thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just wake up and you find out those prices are just. And that's the way it happens in the United States, yes. in UK, everywhere. You know, different prices for different markets. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. The market is there for us to enjoy if we know how to manage it properly. I'm not saying that the market is perfect. It isn't. I'm not saying that people don't game the market. Mm -hmm. They do. But what I'm saying is that it's the best system we have, given our nature as human beings. Yes, that's true. Mm, right. So, I mean, you've talked about a lot of things so far and um, how these prices are regulated. I'm sure that answers a lot of questions to people out there. But, you know, I think there are going to be certain implications. Like, for instance, if the, there was a price increase in um, the PMS by the PPPRA, what do you think would be the implication of this price increase mm. and when it comes to things like household cost and transportation for Nigerians? You know, um, again, that's a village <laughs> square discussion. But let me just add one economic concept of cost push inflation. Mm -hmm. Now, cost push inflation means that your costs go up, mm -hmm. right? And because your costs are going up, then inflation rides on the back of those increasing costs. Now, let me give you a typical example. Um, PPRA says, okay, let's move this price up to two, uh, 206, 269. Yes, but that is, doesn't add the retail, retailer's margin. Mm -hmm. Retailer's margin is 6 naira. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're going to add that 6 naira, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to add it to it and say that, okay, you know what, let's add this 6 naira to it. So you're anywhere between, you're somewhere around 212 12 naira. naira yeah. yeah, you're somewhere around 212 naira. Now, will that hurt? Oh, yeah. Yes. It's going to hurt badly. <laughs> it will hurt because yeah. people but would complain. Again, we've got to ask ourselves, would that hurt be short term or, or is term. it going to be long term or medium term? Okay. Right. Now, it's like 
you stumble. And when you stumble, you graze your foot, mm -hmm. right? I need to help you. So what do I do? I get spirit, what we call spirit in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I get, we get spirit, mentholated spirit. Yes. I pour it on it and it stings like hell. At that moment. At that moment. Just at that, that moment. Just at that moment. Then after some time, you know. Relief. The, uh, relief <laughs> sets in, exactly. exactly. Relief sets in. Um, I bandage the thing up and perhaps in a, maybe yes, a week, mm -hmm. you're fine. Yes. Your legs are better, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what I think should happen, really. Yeah, that's you know, true. we need to hurt us. Certainly will hurt us. Right? Will prices go up? And I'm, and, and I'm very conscious of this fact. Yes. Now, in, at the end of um, 2020, mm -hmm. inflation rate, rate was 15.75%. Uh, That's one of the highest inflation rates Nigeria has ever had to suffer. Right? Yes, yes. And it's been growing. If you look at the beginning of 2020, inflation was 12.2%. Right? Yes. We were still worried then because in C the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, mm -hmm. has said that its target for inflation was between 6% and 9%, single digit. Yeah. But at the beginning of 2020, we didn't experience single digit. No. We were at 12.12%. .12%. Yeah. By December, we already got into 15.75%. By January, we had already got into 16.47%. So February, what are we expecting? A much higher rate. Of course. So timing is also an issue. Mm -hmm. It's about timing too. If you if you jerk up the price of PMS now, mm -hmm. and you need to move goods across the country, mm -hmm. that is going to accelerate that inflation rate. Of course. Right? Now, accelerated inflation is going to affect not only the household, mm -hmm. because it will affect the household. Definitely. They go to the market, yes. they suddenly see that the price of gari has gone of up. Everything. The price of banana, a eh, banana. Gone up. It, gone up oil. <laughs> or gone up. Are you a lady, so you understand yes. that? Yes. <laughs> yes. We go yes. to the market. That's what we're talking about here. So everything goes up, right? Yes. Yeah, that's quite a challenge. Um, but see, the thing is, are we going to take that mentholated spirit at the moment? Now so that we can have some healing Later. going on. Nigeria has been wounded. Very. As an economy, as a country, as a people, mm -hmm. we've been wounded by a variety of issues, mm -hmm. political, social, mm -hmm. economic. So I can understand that timing might not be right. But then again, I always argue, what is the right time? Yeah. Because we keep saying, oh, no, yes, wait, yes, wait, yes, yeah. wait. And we keep getting deeper and deeper into a hole. Yeah, it's like there's never a right time for it. There's never a right time. So the thing about it for me is to bite the bullet. Mm. Um, one uh, brilliant writer says that, eat that frog. Mm. And just just going to have to eat that frog. Mm. You know, it's not going to be pleasant. Of course. And let me tell you something about eating frogs. I know you don't like eating frogs, <laughs> no. but, but in some countries they actually do eat Yes, frogs. I know that. Yes, yes, great. So when you see a lineup of frogs, which one should you eat first? Is it the big one or the small one? The big one. The big one. Definitely. You're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, you eat the big one. So inflation concerns is a big frog for Nigerian economy. Mm -hmm. um, jerking up oil prices is going to be a terrible thing Definitely. in terms of inflation. It will worsen it. Mm -hmm. But it's our own big frog. Mm. We've got to eat that big frog, right? Yeah. The problem I have is there's a bit of a problem with the pricing because when prices actually go down, mm -hmm. does the pump price go down? Yes. Now, what we've seen is that sometimes prices actually come down. Sometimes. Right? Yeah, they yeah. come down. Yeah. Um, during the, the heat of the COVID mm -hmm. in the uh, um, second and third quarter of, <laughs> sorry, of, um, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, in the second and third quarter, of 2020, we saw prices dip yeah. significantly. Mm -hmm. But how come our pump price isn't dip? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, you, if you're using a template, mm -hmm. you were saying you're using a template, and this is the template we're using, then I'll expect that when prices go up in international markets, then okay, pump price goes up. Mm -hmm. When prices come down, pump prices pump price go down. come down at the same time. But what we've seen is that pump prices remain it sticky. It remains the same, yeah. It remains the same. Mm -hmm. It's only when international prices go up go that up, pump price yeah. goes up. Mm -hmm. But if they come down, pump price doesn't come down. So I'm asking, is it not the same formula we are using? I mean, if the formula says, um, okay, this thing should go up when this goes up, how come it doesn't go down when that same thing goes down? Mm -hmm. So that is a major challenge. We've got to be able to ensure that we are more transparent with Nigerians. Yes. And I think that's where our problem really lies. The transparency. Transparency, right. We've got to be more transparent. We've got to build trust. Yes. 
There's a trust deficit in the country. Yes, between the government and the people. Uh, yeah, and the people, yeah. So the government and the government, there is a disconnect. Mm -hmm. People simply don't trust government, no, no. right? They always think that a policy is about a scam. Mm -hmm. Somebody's trying to scam them somewhere, yes. right? And they want to dissect where that scam is coming from and avoid it if they can. Mm -hmm. So the government needs to build transparency into its system. Yeah. It also needs to build trust. And let people know that, look, see, the price has gone up like this. And mm -hmm. so because this that price is has gone up, this is, like this. this is why it's like that this. That would have avoided a lot that of drama. That would have avoided a lot of the drama. And then assuring people that, look, see, don't worry. It's temporary. It's temporary. That when prices come down, this is what we will see. Okay. Now, let me tell you also why I'm saying that this trust deficit. I'll, I'll throw, uh, there's a throwback to the Chief Olusha Gwabasanjo administration mm -hmm. in the first time where they said, we used to have... Uh, what we called um, toll gates. Yes, the toll gates. The, the toll gates. Mm -hmm. Now, Lagos Ibadan had a toll gate. And the president at the time said, you know what, let's get rid of these toll gates. Too much um, stress in terms of time, people waste on the road. Mm -hmm. More importantly, Traffic. we're not making much money from it, okay. really. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of diversion of funds and everything. So there's not much money coming from those, mm -hmm. um, the, those toll gates. So he said, what we will do is to add a little bit of money onto petrol PMS price. Mm -hmm. Now the money we add to PMS price will be used to maintain the roads. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, since those two gates have been removed, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway has deteriorated. Yeah, worse. It's much gotten worse. much worse. So that money that you said you added to the price of pump price of fuel mm -hmm. that was designed to maintain the roads. Where did my it lord, go? where did it go to? <laughs> where did it go? That's a big yeah, where question. did it go? That's why I said these kind of things create that um, trust deficit. Breach of trust. He has a breach of trust. I mean, so when the government says it's going to do it, it should do it. Mm -hmm. um, recently, the vice president said we have enough think tanks. Mm -hmm. What we want to do, what we want now, is do tanks. Yes. So we move from think tank to do tanks. Mm -hmm. So, like Nike will say, do it. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> very, very important. So, um, when it comes to petroleum subsidy, what are the things that Nigerians need to know about it? Are we still paying it, or has it complete, completely been phased out? Oh, that's a that's a good question. No, it has not been phased out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like I said earlier, you know, um, currently what we are doing is you're doing an ex depot price of 148 naira. Mm -hmm. That's what NNPC has uh, um, done so far. Yes. And we're saying that the, the ex depot price should be about, uh, let's say, uh, 206. Mm -hmm. So the difference between that times, we consume about 57.44 million barrels per day, allegedly. That's a lot. And it's allegedly, not even allegedly, okay. <laughs> we consume about 57.44 million barrels per day, uh, sorry, li um, liters of liters. fuel per day, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that creates a massive subsidy. Very. That creates a massive like because a when you multiply demand. that, yeah, by, by when you multiply that out, you, you, you're doing over 100 billion, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about even in the month of March alone, you know, and that's big money. That's, that's really yeah. big money, mm -hmm. and that's money that could be put into completing the second Niger Bridge, exactly. completing the Lagos, Lagos Ibadan yes. Expressway, um, putting real, the uh, east-west road could be put together properly. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm saying that, look, we've got to get to a point where we tell ourselves the bitter truth. Yeah. It's not going to be pretty. Definitely. It's going to be pretty ugly. I mean, if you watch the old Rocky films, yeah. some of them, Rocky, Rocky gets Velvo, beaten and... Yes. Yeah, he uh, got a lot Rocky of Bar -Bar. punches. He gets punches, and he, but at the end of the he day... He always picked up. He gets up, yeah. gets up on his feet. It's not about how many punches you receive, you know, it's not about how bloody your face is, mm -hmm. it's about your determination to meet an objective. Mm -hmm. And the objective here is to create an economy that is sustainable. Yes. Can Very we sustain important. the subsidies we have? My, 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 my dear sister, we can't. Mm. So we, yes, we do have, to answer your question directly, yes, there's a lot of subsidies still going on. Wow. Okay, so um, what are the challenges um, that we're facing with passing the uh, petroleum industry bill into law. I mean, I think this bill is important. So what are the challenges we're facing at the uh, moment? You're asking very tough questions this morning. <laughs> Did that offend you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. definitely not. Right, right. So, um, but it's, it's a very valid question to ask. It's been in the works for years, mm -hmm. and we simply have not been able to pass exactly. it. Exactly. It's been and, gone for long. Um, the thing about it is that there has been a lot of 
vested interests. Mm -hmm. Some people simply love the way the system works mm, because some people. Um, some people are milking and bilking this exactly. country because of the way things are today, mm -hmm. right? Um, let's play. Let's play a bit of devil's advocate here. Okay. I passed the um, I passed the petroleum industry bill. Mm -hmm. So the chaps who announced on Friday that look prices are going to go up, you know, um, between two hundred six and two twelve. Mm -hmm. Do you need them? No, you don't. You don't need the bill has stated bill has what needs to be done. Yeah, so, so, don't, hey. so it's like yeah. regulating everybody before Everybody's, they take an action. Exactly, everybody takes an action. Okay. So hey, you don't need them again, right? Yeah. And there's some some people in um, the big the big Kahuna, mm -hmm. the NPC themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, the NPC will be broken mm. because what you're seeing is an institution that is a regulator and an operator. Operator at the same time. Same time. Okay. So that isn't good governance practice. It's either you're an operator or you're a regulator. Oh. So the bill takes care of that and says, okay, you know what? A company will be NAPC, right? There's mm -hmm. a company, it's NAPC Limited. Mm -hmm. That company, go and do your retail business, do your other businesses. If you want to go into upstream, okay, fine, go and do okay. that. But you can't be a regulator. Mm -hmm. So who regulates? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, so what you have is, um, you do have regulators actually. Yes. So you have a downstream regulator, you have a midstream regulator, and then you have an upstream, upstream regulator. regulator. So there are three different regulators, right? Okay. For downstream, midstream, and upstream, which is a fantastic solution, quite honestly, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that you, these are the, your regulators. So even NNPC itself mm -hmm. is subject to regulation. Of course. NNPC itself is subject to audit. Mm -hmm. NNPC itself imposes upon itself the discipline that you expect from a private entity. Of course. That's how best practices are developed. Mm -hmm. When you subject yourself to the discipline that every other participant has to be subjected to. Mm -hmm. But if I'm the... So, it, but if I'm the jury, the judge, mm -hmm. and the prosecutor, I'm like, God, I can't do any wrong. That's true. So, it's not good practice, not good housekeeping practice okay. for us to have every kind of um, regulatory and operating institution in one single body. Exactly. So, what the PIB does is to disaggregate these institutions and allow each institution to do what is best suited for. Okay. So the downstream regulation will regulate downstream, the midstream regulator will regulate the midstream, mid and then the upstream will regulate upstream. upstream it's as well. similar as that. And then the MNPC can get into partnerships, do whatever it wants to do, you know, but we'll hold them accountable. Definitely. We expect to see annual reports. Accountability. Accountability. On, from everybody. Yeah, from everybody, every side of the show. Okay. Okay. Right. That's quite interesting. So, um, it's passed. How critical would it be? Okay. Right. Um, I think it's pivotal. It's mm -hmm. pivotal to generating um, investments into the country. One of the reasons why investors are a bit wary of about Nigeria investing. Yes, is about investing is the fact that we don't, um, we've allowed ourselves to, sorry, yeah. yes, we've allowed ourselves to be um, cocooned mm. into this comfort zone where we believe that everything is lovey-dovey the way it is mm -hmm. and why, if it, the Americans have a brilliant expression for it. Yeah. If it ain't broke, why fix it? Mm. Interesting. But, but it is actually broke. It's broken. So fix it. We need to fix it. We need it. to fix it. So investors are saying, okay, let us see transparency in your pricing. Mm -hmm. Let us see, if I come into the system, I see regulation that affects all parties. I see respect for contracts. Mm -hmm. Because one of the major problems in the system is a lack of respect for contracts. Even the federal government tends not to respect its own contracts it has with IOCs, mm -hmm. which are international oil companies. Yeah. The contracts are like PSC which is um, sharing contracts, mm -hmm. right? The petroleum sharing contract. Now, this contract expects that you are supposed to make certain regular contributions. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The government doesn't make it in a timely manner. And that creates problems for the private sector because what happens is that the guy has to borrow money mm -hmm. at an interest rate, yes. right? And that increases his cost of operations when he thought that he will get counterparts funding from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So, but in this new scenario, Everybody will have to. Um, uh, a friend of mine, how does that expression goes for this thing? You day your day, 
In other words, let me you get, day my day. Yes, yeah, you day your day. So everybody's <laughs> look. You do your thing. I do my thing. Yeah. We come together. We agree, and you know things are lovely. Yeah. They're fine. Mm -hmm. But you don't expect me to take up your own problem, right? You yeah. take your problem up. I'll face my own problems. But we agree that this is the common goal, and we meet that expectation. Mm. But I think the problem has been that um, uh, the government has the knife, it has the yam. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not prepared to play ball the way we want to play it, then, then you got to go. You've got to go, yeah, right? That's but true. we are hoping that with the passage of the PIB, there's a lot more orderliness in the system. There's yeah. a much greater respect for contracts mm -hmm. between entities. Yeah, so that, that, that should be the case, hopefully, once the bill is passed. I'm not saying it's perfect, mm -hmm. but it's a good start. Good start. Yeah, so the bill would be a good start to yeah. stabilize, you know, the economy yes. and everything. Yes, really. Okay, so Nigeria has had over a decade to stabilize itself as a gas-led industry economy. And um, basically, what do you think, like, um, ProShare had posted a report of, you know, they posted a report last the last week on... Um, you know the 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 issues within the gas uh, market, the oil and gas mar um, market. Yeah. So basically, what we want to know now is what would be um, the major grid gridlocks to achieving this plan, this ten years plan that they have set. What do you think they need to do in order to be able to achieve this ten years plan to help Nigeria be positioned as a gas-led industry? Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's another question that. Um, <laughs> it's one of those tough questions. Yeah, <laughs> tough I don't know why this the question is really tough. Me, got tough. tough <laughs> but okay, um, I'll, tr I'll try my best. Okay. Right. Now, we've declared a decade of gas. Mm -hmm. uh, fossil fuel in particular, uh, DPK, that's kerosene, mm -hmm. and uh, PMS, which is petrol. Yeah. Right. So um, it, it's not it's okay, it's good. Products that people want will shift away from the white oil, the mm -hmm. what we call white oil, you know, the white oil to liquid crude. Crude oil. Right. So we're basically sitting on gas. Mm. So for me, um, that's a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, we should take advantage of our gas. It's in that market and it's done fine. Mm -hmm. It's done quite fine. Um, we don't see price templates for EGU. Mm -hmm. No PPRA. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call LPG. LPG is uh, liquefied petroleum gas. Now, liquefied petroleum gas is what we call cooking gas. The gas unit the one is we used. used to yes, cook. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you know it. You know it. Yeah. So it's it's, it's those canister gases mm -hmm. that we use, right? Um, until September last year, it was priced the way AGO was priced. Mm -hmm. Willing buyer, willing seller. Willing seller. Right. Mm -hmm. Until September, the eventful or fateful September. When the PPRA says, you know what, you guys have to pay one naira twenty-three kobo. Why? Administrative charge. Administrative charge for what? <laughs> yeah, we could understand for PMS. I mean, mm -hmm. you come out with data, you do analysis, analysis you do all kinds yeah. of things, um, you do uh, trucking, what they call yeah. So we 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 can understand that yes, you have some administrative functions in the oversight of PMS, mm -hmm. but you don't have that same function in the oversight of gas. Mm -hmm. That's it. And we're already trying to get PMS to a point where we don't have to have those templates. Those templates, yes. So why are you introducing those templates now when we're talking about a PIB bill? Exactly. Now, first of all, foremost, I didn't say it, mm -hmm. but the bill said it. The bill says it. Remove PPRA. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's a bit of a problem in that sense that you're, you're, you're sending the wrong signals to an international investment market. Mm -hmm. The international investment market is looking at it and says, hey, come, I thought um, gas was not uh, subject to all these regulations and funny things. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we're now seeing some regulations being sneaked in. Yeah. That creates signaling that Nigeria is not reliable. Exactly. We can come at any point in time and impose any and tariff we like yeah. and change it without notice, without, without consideration of the yeah. implications, right? So I think... Moving towards gas is good, but the government, for goodness sake, should please, and I'm appealing, mm -hmm. that they should take their fingers off it. Mm -hmm. Allow it to run the way AGU has run, with willing suppliers and uh, willing buyers, right? So okay. if both the, the interface between the supply and the demand side 
should easily determine prices, right? Mm -hmm. And encourage people to come in because those people coming in will say, okay, you know what? My calculator. Okay. Right. How much does gas sell for in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Oh, this amount. Ah. Mm, there's a lot. What, what kind of margin am I making on it? Oh, okay. That's it. Bingo. This is right. The this is better. This is the market. <laughs> yeah. And he goes into the market. Yeah. You know the good thing about it? It means that we're going to have a lot more gas, mm -hmm. cooking gas. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a lot more employment along the gas value chain. Yes. More people get employed. Job, they yeah, we'll also improve in terms of our application of gas to a variety of other things, mm -hmm. which is what we haven't done with uh, crude. Mm -hmm. but crude can produce, at the very basic, mm -hmm. 144 different products. Wow. Ranging from plastics, acrylics, Okay, wow. you can even do um, gum. You get you get your gum. Yeah, you get uh, stick and sticky. Yes, yeah, yeah. sticky things. You get it from so you get your sticky stuff. Then you're also going to be able to do certain things with what they call it. I don't want to use big grammar here, <laughs> you know, but they're polymers, right? Okay. So these are things you see on your laptop. Mm -hmm. You see part of the polymers being used. No, no. wide value chain mm -hmm. don't exist. Anymore. So you would have had a polymer expert. Right? Yeah. You would have had a guy who's an expert in plastic. Mm -hmm. You would have had a guy who was an expert in any other thing. Every other. Every thing. other. Mm. <laughs> you know it. You have the basic areas of cosmetics, plastics, all kinds of things. Okay. We have not gotten to that point because we have not optimized the opportunities in that sector. Okay. And before I stop on this topic, mm. I need to let you know why it's so important that we take advantage of the gas industry properly mm -hmm. and see what values we can bring out of it. Nigeria's largest export to Africa, 78%, mm -hmm. is oil. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, yes, look at that. Manufacturing, how, mu how much percentage do we, um, how much of the manufactured goods do we send out to Africa? 20%. So we have like majority oil export. Yes, so w most of what we do is just to take stuff out of the ground and send it to other countries. African countries, you know? That isn't a smart thing to do. That's smart. It isn't smart. The smart thing to do was to, is to add value. We talk about agriculture, agriculture, agriculture. Agriculture is good, but it could be a lot better if there was manufacturing. It was around 27%. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, uh, this month we might get, we might get um, employment figures again. Yeah. And if those employment figures come out, I'll be... They might be I'll worse. Be, yeah, uh, yes, I, I think they might get worse, just as I think inflation figures will get worse. As well. You know? And that means that the misery index, Nigeria's mis misery index, will be worse. Mm. So we've got to take critical decisions now, not tomorrow, now, about what is our vision for Nigeria. Nigeria. We need to re-strategize Nigeria. We need to rethink Nigeria. We need to reimagine Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria needs to be reimagined. The old paradigms, the old methods, the old, they don't they work. They're no longer working. We, they never worked. <laughs> so that they no longer, they never worked. I mean, um, if you look at uh, the issues of subsidy, we've been talking about this since 2012. Yes. Prior to 2012, um, a younger generation will be surprised to note that in 1984, we did what we call contract trade. Mm. And that was swaps. We were swapping, we were, we were swapping oil. Wow. But why would we want to do that? This is a country that is blessed. Mm -hmm. We had four refineries. Yeah. What's happened to our refineries? <sighs> Beat me. Kaduna is down. Portakot is down. Worry one, worry two is down. And suddenly we're all waiting on um, the Dangote. Dangote. <laughs> yes. But see what? Nigeria consumes, from what we have said earlier, Nigeria consumes about 471,000 barrels per day mm -hmm. domestically. Dangote produces 650,000, mm -hmm. right? So, not much difference, right? Not much difference. Not much difference mm -hmm. in this. So may, maybe we say, okay, Dangote supplies the local market. But the smart thing for us to do is to actually export. Export. Generate foreign exchange, mm -hmm. right? But have a domestic refinery. Where we can also produce. Where we can also produce different lines of products, products that can also create employment. For our people. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're exporting. Now, if our refineries were working, mm -hmm. 
we have a huge number of people just idling away. Those people won't idle away. They'll be fully engaged. Of course. So what we have successfully done is to export refining. Mm -hmm. That's true. Creating jobs for, for people for outside, outside the country. The, meanwhile, 27% of our youth are jobless. Are jobless. Mm -hmm. And I, and I suspect the figures are quite higher. Obviously. We find out there are um, a lot of prices in Nigeria of petroleum, pro, um, petroleum products. Uh, a lot of people voted um, the government. Do you think this should be happening in a deregulated market? I think the question answers itself, really. From, <laughs> from all that we've <laughs> from said From all that we've morning, said before. Right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, and no, I don't think that the government um, should regulate You the specifically market. had said but this I'm earlier. Saying, but I'm saying... I'm talking about price regulation. Yeah. But regulation in terms of um, the quality of your products, yes. 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 You have to meet quality yes. standards, yes. right? In terms of operations, for instance, you can't just go and start uh, mining oil, for instance, and then you spill oil mm -hmm. and there's no consequence. Yeah. No, you must be regulated. Mm -hmm. How you process your oil must be consistent with best global practices. So there must be rules, there must be regulations concerning operations. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Product quality, operations, there should be regulation. Yes. But price is a different ballgame. Mm -hmm. No, that shouldn't be regulated by the government. Um, but we need to say, like I said earlier, it is not oil, oil products that are priced by the government. Of course. Um, you've got uh, automated gas oil, mm -hmm. which I call diesel. Well, let me say, I don't call it diesel. All of us. I would call it diesel in Nigeria. Yeah, in Nigeria. So, automated gas oil, yeah, it's, uh, it's not regulated, yeah. you know, until um, efforts by the PPRA mm -hmm. to sneak itself into yeah. the price structure mm -hmm. by the 1923 cover I talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the gas market, for instance, has not been regulated, regulated. until September, when again, our good chaps in the PPRA. Decided sneaking with the one hour twenty three cover again. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the magic is about one hour twenty three cover. So don't ask me. But <laughs> okay. all I do know is that they've tried to put one hour twenty three cover across the board. Every oil or oil related product, uh, um, there's an administrative charge of yes. one hour twenty three cover. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it will stick because, of course, the PIB doesn't recognize that. Of course. Okay. So thank you very much, Mr. Teslin Shetabe, for joining us today on the Analyst Speaks and shedding more light on all the things we had questions about. Um, okay, guys, so don't go anywhere, as by 10 a.m. we'll be coming on with Economy and Politics, where we'll be having more discussions on um, the gas and the oil market as well. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. And if you'd like to follow us across social media platforms, you, you can follow us on all the handles that are showing on your screen right now. And also stay tuned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.